Hey everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're gonna do image transfers with liquid polymer clay. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, so this is Sculpey Clear Transparent Liquid Polymer Clay that's going down on the paper right here. And this paper is Nina cardstock um, paper. I, you know, I got this from Office Depot, I believe, or something, you know, one of the office supply places. Anyways, um, I wanted to try this on regular paper. Now, I know this is not a glob, okay? This is a thin sheet of clay. I've seen a lot of other people do um, liquid trans transfers where, you know, they put a blob on and then they do all sorts of different things. Well, I'm going to do it entirely different and you're going to get a very thin sheet from it. So right here, like I said, I've got a brush. I've got my little paint pan over here that's holding my um, liquid polymer and I've got my heat gun. Yes, I have gone back to my heat gun and guys, this thing works. Look at this. Look at how it comes up. See how it darkens? It gets dark because of that clear transparency. You, your image comes right up, okay? Now, you might notice here, and I'm not sure if you can tell, as I'm you know, moving it back and forth, all of a sudden you start to see a shine. That is very important. That shine tells you whether or not you've gotten that image completely baked all the way through and it goes to a gloss it goes to a high gloss so you know i tried to do it where it was partial so where it was like it would almost give you a matte finish that works but it's still not completely baked and you're going to see a little bit of puff of like fumes or whatever that come up from the paper <laughs> um that's normal that's normal and then i'm taking my blade yes i am taking my firm tissue blade to bring up this image and just a little bit so right here and then i start pulling this stuff is so flexible in this state you can pull and on the nina paper i will have to admit it takes a little bit of doing so you know i had to use my blade and every once in a while as i use my blade uh, it could sometimes affect getting up some of that image but for the most part it works Look at that. I've gotten a clear image and I can use that as backing. Now notice it curls, okay? That's from pulling it so hard. I was pulling it pretty hard on that paper, okay? It will curl up naturally. So that's something you really need to take into account. Again, I'm using my clear transparent here and I'm gonna do it one more time. I thought, eh, let's, let's just try it just to make sure. <laughs> and so I kind of squirted it on there. I really like the little paint dish better. Uh, you know, the thing is, if you squirt on the polymer clay onto the paper, you might get an excess and yeah, it can get a little more messy. Plus, then you have to take that excess, you gotta put it back in the bottle. So <laughs> I really do prefer that little paint dish. Okay, notice I put a pretty good coating on that image. Once I did that, I'm using my heat gun. Once again, you can see the image coming up. It's gonna have a matte look right at first. And then the more you use that heat gun, it'll go to a high gloss. Once you get that really nice high gloss going, um, after that, let it cool. You're gonna to wanna to let this image cool because what's gonna happen is you're gonna fan it, you're gonna cool it down, and then you're gonna lift the image up off the paper. And I know this goes against most of what the other heat gun technique does, especially in my first video I showed, okay, you gotta get that paper up right away because you want that image to stay on the clay. Here, it does not matter. You can let this thing cool and then come back to it later and bring up that image. So here I went ahead and took some duct tape and I really, you know, I taped that paper down because I thought this is gonna help me a little bit in trying to bring this image up. So I get my blade underneath it and I have a little bit of leeway on the bottom there. I have a little extra clay and that is so I could get my blade underneath so then my hands could start pulling that image up from the paper.
Okay, so I have this image now, and I just wanted to go ahead and bring in a votive piece of glass. I want to show you what this frosty-like looking image looks like once it's on that glass. The thing is, trying to adhere it to it doesn't necessarily look like that in the end. Okay, so we're going to go through the same process yet again, but this time we're going to use colorful butterflies. So I wanted to bring color in and see if there was any difference whatsoever. So again, I'm taking my clear transparent uh, liquid Sculpey and I'm just brushing it over these butterfly images. And then we'll go ahead and use that heat gun yet again on these images and see if there's any difference whatsoever. So here again, I'm trying to bring up my images with these butterflies, and we're just going to pull these up as best we can. Uh, take your time on this, um, especially um, using with the paper. And even then, here's something I needed to point out to you guys. This will happen with the paper, or it can. Uh, not always. Um, sometimes it'll work just fine. You'll get the image up, no problem. But I found that when I went to go do this with my blade, Sometimes I will get paper up with the image. Now you're wondering probably, well, why would I want to try the image transfer this way then? Um, and that is where in the next few segments, you're going to start seeing the solutions to this whole big problem. Okay, so one of the solutions to this particular problem is when you go to brush on paper, you know, the liquid Sculpey, the clear transparent or any kind, make sure you have a pretty good coating on it. So in other words, what I mean is you're going to have a paper thin coating, but on the edges of where you have your image, make sure there's a little bit more um, you know, clay that is down. So in other words, where it's kind of, you could almost have like a little hump, if you will, <laughs> um, to kind of build it up on the edges. That way then when your blade comes under, and if you've got a nice, pretty decent coating on that image, most of the time it'll come up with no problems whatsoever. Another reason why I think the images bring up the paper so readily on that one I think part of it is because it was towards the edge of the paper itself. So if you have an image more in the center of your piece of paper, more than likely that would have a better chance of coming up solid without having any kind of troubles. Because you're dealing with, you get close to the, you know, the very edge of your paper, it's kind of hard to get your blade underneath that image to try and lift up the clay. So the closer into your center of your paper, almost the easier it is for you to work on it. Okay, so I wanted to try this technique using print. And I've got two images here where they're printed the right way and then two images which are reversed. And I'm gonna be using my clear trans, um, transparent and my silver clay. So our silver liquid clay. I wanted to bring that in and show you guys some really interesting things. So on the reverse down here, I'm taking one of the reverse images. I'm using my silver clay. I'm going to go ahead and brush that out onto the paper and make sure there's a nice, you know, fairly even coating on this whole thing. Notice, of course, too, with the um, colored clay, it's opaque. It's not see-through at all. All right, so I baked this thing all the way through. I'm using my blade to bring up this image. And I will tell you guys, it was a lot easier to bring this up than it was the clear. And I don't know exactly why that was, but to me it was just a lot easier. Uh, so that, you know, those opaque and those colored clays, they come up a lot easier on your paper. And I'm just trimming this up because I thought, well, I'll make it nice and neat. And you've got a nice silvery background on that piece too. Okay, so now we're gonna bring in our clear transparent and we're gonna put that down on the print where it's in reverse. 
and we'll go ahead and brush that on and I left a little bit of silver in there that's okay <laughs> I'll just have a nice little slightly a little bit of a glitter kind of look to this that is the other thing you can do with this thing guys you could take just a little and I just took a little bit from my brush when I did this and it'll give you a little bit of a glittery effect in your transparent clay so again I'm just going to go ahead use my heat gun and bring this image up okay so right here you can see it's been baked and you see that nice little glittery effect and so we're going to go ahead and I'm just cooling it down just a little bit and we're going to take our blade and get right under that image and we're just going to bring this thing up and like I said you know these kind of came off a little bit easier I really kind of wonder if maybe there's something to a little bit of having that opaque or that silver toned kind of clay mixed in with my clear if maybe that made a difference but again it, it took a little bit to get the image up though too okay so we flipped that around and there you have your image now notice this is matte looking that's because it was on the other side of it, it was connected to the paper so when you re reverse your print it's going to give you a matte looking feature even when you place that down onto another piece of clay it's going to have a matte effect and remember too that's the ink side so the ink can kind of come off a little bit easy as well now let's go ahead and I'm using my silver um, uh, clay yet again <laughs> sorry <laughs> and I'm brushing that on and let's go ahead and do that again on where I have not reversed the print at all okay so this should not this you know I'm like thinking yeah this isn't going to work very good right because it's right side up I mean why would it work you know you always have to reverse your print so right here I'm taking it up and sure enough it it doesn't work because it's not reversed you have to always reverse your print whenever you put it down on the paper and this way then it will work and it'll come up correctly you know any time with your liquid colored clays now let's go to our clear transparent and let's see what happens there and this again this is where the print is the right way it's the correct way <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and I have a little bit of silver there we're just going to keep that on the brush and just brush it into my clear so I'm brushing it in and then we're going to bake this thing and we're going to bring it up okay so the image here has been baked through we're going to go ahead and start bringing this up and you know you can see a little bit of that glitter there on that image and we're just going to quickly and I I left a pretty good lip on this because <laughs> I thought you know what it does come up a little bit hard on this paper so again just take your time try to bring it up as nicely as possible now this will take just a little bit trying to get this up but here we have it now up off our paper and I want you guys to see something yeah it's coming up the right side with the gloss in other words that mat that's connected to the paper itself that doesn't matter because it's clear transparent clay you could see this image through and through without having to reverse your print I was so excited about that oh my goodness look at that and a little bit of sparkle too <laughs> I was so thrilled I no longer have to reverse my print on my computer I can just print it out in a regular fashion and use my clear transparent clay in the liquid Sculpey and have fun okay so cartooning paper when I started doing these images I was I thought okay the paper I was so excited about it I really was I was like yay it's coming up and I could do this with my blade and everything and the thing was every once in a while that paper would tear it drove me absolutely nuts batty and I was like oh doggone it you know and the more I started thinking about it I thought well maybe it's the surface I'm using it just kind of like dinged in my head well maybe it's the surface and I had some really smooth cartooning paper in the back and I thought okay let's go ahead and use this 
when I did this, holy cow, it made a world of difference. Absolutely. Now, there was only one problem with this particular thing. I went looking for cartooning paper out there. <laughs> I could not find it, at least not this type. If you find this particular type of cartooning paper, yes, snap it up if you want, because it will work great for the transfer technique. However, you know, like I said, I couldn't find it. It wasn't readily available. So I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh boy. But this technique, I put it down. I used my blade. It came right up. It, I, I did not have to push and pull when it came to getting that clay up off the surface because it was coated. There's a little bit of a shine to this paper. I absolutely loved it. Okay, so my paper's been cooled down and I'm just gonna go ahead and use that blade and I'm gonna show you how, look at this. So I bring it in, look at how, I didn't have to really push and pull a little bit at all, if hardly that. And I got my, my blade and it was just coming up good and I thought, well, let's go ahead and pull. Well, the more I pulled, it was like, well, this is coming up nice. This came out really good. Yes, there was some resistance. There was still a little bit of resistance there and you, you know, I came in with my blade to kind of help this. I probably suggest don't doing that because for some reason the ink kind of, you know, doesn't always come off, you know? So, but look, I got that no problem. I didn't have any kind of, really, I mean, it was just, and it was super clear. You know, unlike the paper, the paper when you put it down and you bring the image up, you get a bit of a frosty look. This came down super clear. So I thought, let's go ahead and do this some more on a few other butterflies. Okay, so again, I'm baking this up. It's coming up to a nice clear shine. Um, and once you get that done, you, you cool it off just a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring our blade in one more time. And right here, I'm dealing with the very edge of the paper. Remember how I complained about that before, where it was like, it was difficult to deal with? Guess what? It doesn't seem to affect it quite so much when it comes to this cartooning paper. I was like, yeah, this is great. Oh my goodness. Yes, I had to pull a little bit. And, but you know what? That was the other thing too. When I pulled the clay from this particular paper, it, oh man. I, it did not, it didn't, it didn't curl up on me as much. It, it seemed to like want to lay flat a lot easier. Um, it didn't seem to like, I don't know, it just, it worked really great. Okay, so here I had one other butterfly. I, I mixed in a little bit of my pearl glitter type thing on my brush with my, my clear transparent and guys, oh, I just loved it. <laughs> it turned out so great. You get the little glittery effect along with that butterfly. Okay, so I quickly wanted to go ahead and do a little black and white image and my print kind of served as that in this case. And I'm using this again on my cartooning paper and I wanted to show you guys with that clear and maybe a little bit, I, I probably have a little bit of a residual pearl or silver in, um, you know, on my brush. So it might come up sparkly. I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, I'm putting down a little bit of this translucent clay and we're gonna go ahead and bake it and then bring up the image. Okay, so I'm using my blade here and I'm starting to bring up my image and this was printed the correct way or the right, right way up. And look at how it took off all the black. <laughs> it brought up the entire pigment or the entire ink from the paper. And again, mind you, I did it also with the reverse just to kind of see. And again, it brought up all the ink. I absolutely love that. Now, because it was reversed, of course, I have to turn it around. So, you know, the thing was though, look at that little bit of glitter in there. I love that. Oh, it looks so good. So one has got a little bit of a matte finish and the other one has got that glossy look.
Okay guys, so this is the grand poobah for me. Okay, so here's the thing. I couldn't find that cartooning paper and I thought I gotta find another type of paper. And originally, I went looking for wax paper because I thought that's gotta be the, that, yeah, it's got a coating to it, that'd be great, right? So I went to Walmart, I was looking around and they didn't have any wax paper, but here on the shelf, they had this freezer paper and it had a plastic coating to it. So I thought, eh, what the heck? Let's go ahead and take it home and try it. Oh my gosh. It worked. In fact, I found wax paper eventually later. It does not work. <laughs> Don't use the wax paper. It's going to get jammed or it's going to just disappear. <laughs> Still looking for that sheet of paper. <laughs> so use freezer paper with this coat. Oh my goodness. It works great. You know, go through your whole process yet again, put that image on the wax, wax side, and then you know what? Bring it up with your blade and guess what? that blade went under smooth oh my goodness like butter baby like butter and then i even just started pulling it up it, it hardly torqued on me at all it brought up the entire black and white image all of my ink right there and it was not frosty at all beautiful Okay, so you knew if I did a black and white image, I'm going to have to do color um, because sometimes I can never tell if color, it, it doesn't always act the same. Color images, you know, and I don't know if it's just because of the pigments or whatever, but you know, your black and white could come up completely solid, wonderful, your black, you know, ink, but sometimes, I don't know, maybe it's because of the pigments, sometimes color does not always come up. So I thought, let's go ahead and try it, try it on the freezer paper and see what happens. Okay, so I've brought these butterflies up to a nice high shine. We're going to go ahead and bring in our blade. And, you know, I thought, okay, we'll just, and this, and I brought in a blade specifically on this one because this was ultra thin. I had a little bit of trouble coming up with it, but not much. Literally, this was, I want to say it was probably thinner than paper, and it turned out great. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and try the transfer technique on the glossy laser paper. And I'm just going to kind of tell you guys this story. I was doing prints, or I was printing images on the freezer paper, and it was working out great. And then I decided I got it in my harebrained head that, oh, let's go get some wax paper and try that too. Well, guess what? I put the wax paper through the printer. It didn't come back out. And then I put freezer paper through and, uh-oh, not so good. <laughs> yes, my printer went down and it was not a good day. Very bad day. Had to get it repaired and so on. Um, I will honestly say, guys, um, I like the freezer paper method, but there is a chance where, you know, it can get gummed up in your printer. So you might want to rethink freezer paper in this regard. However, that being said, and I don't know why I didn't think about it, why not do laser paper? And in this case, it was a soft gloss and it really looked very reminiscent to the cartooning paper. And I was like, yes, so let's try it, right? And it worked, yay, it worked right here. I'm already bringing up this black and white image right here, and you're gonna find it does come off okay. I also discovered that some of this is also dependent upon how thin that clay is. If you have a really thin piece, and right here, this is what I did. I thought, okay, this is kind of a thin piece. I didn't leave any kind of raised area to one side for me to easily peel it off. That I've been discovering is very important. If you can have one area off to the side where, you know, you could put down a thin sheet of clay, but if you have like the side where you're gonna to start to peel it up, if you can make that a little bit thicker, that will help you.
Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do this same method with the words and with some colored images. So with my butterflies here. And I went ahead and I thought, we'll just go ahead and brush on again because we want to see what it will do. I'm pretty certain this is going to act similarly to what the cartooning paper um, did. Uh, yeah, I got a little bit on my <laughs> kind of, I should have pushed my tr uh, dish over just a little further. Um, but um, yeah, so you're going to go ahead and brush this on, on your butterflies. And then I also decided let's go ahead and do the words all at the same time. Right here, I've gotten the clay all nice and baked, and we're just gonna go ahead and start bringing up that word image. And again, you know, just make sure you have a little lip so you can get under there to start pulling it up. And I found on this paper, it worked great. And I didn't have any tearing like I did with the regular cardstock paper. It worked a lot like that cartooning paper. Here again, I really did not have any kind of buildup on one side to kind of get under it. So it takes a little bit. And notice too, I started to rip it. That can happen, especially if you don't have a really good area where you built up a little bit of that clay so you can easily try and pull it off that piece of paper. Okay, so right there I have both of my butterflies up and they look pretty good. This really is very reminiscent of that cartooning paper. Here I wanted to try that butterfly thing all over again, except this time around I wanted to go ahead and I brushed on a little bit more clay onto this particular butterfly. I wanted to see if it would make a difference when it comes to lifting that clay up off the paper. You never can tell. I mean, you know, like I said, I went with some really, really thin brushing on of the clay through some of this. And I wanted to see if maybe just a little bit more of a coat would make a difference. Okay, so I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to go ahead and start to lift off some of this image and I can already tell it's going to come up really nice. Now I'm using my blade a little bit more here though because I find that every once in a while you know that clay can sometimes catch and if it does use your blade just to help you along just a little bit and then once you've got a good hold on it then you can really start to bring up that image. So these are the results of doing my transfer off of regular paper. Now, some of them I got off cleanly, like you can tell. There's a little bit of a frost to them because it is done on paper. And of course, you also see where the paper didn't come out very good. It did not come off cleanly. Um, and then I have still others here where I put them against like a colored background. And I wanted to see if that frosty would still be there or if it would come up clear. And it did come up clear. So even if the image went a little frosty, once you try to put it down on another fresh piece of polymer clay, it will lose its frosty look once it adheres to another piece of clay and is baked. So here are some of the examples of when I used my words. And you can tell that there's the ones where it's kind of matted. It's got that matte look. Some have got a glossy look. I used a little bit of glitter in a few of these. And of course, the clay where you've got the reverse and the, the forward looking print. Okay, so I played around with the clay a little bit more and I didn't really show this, but I want you guys to take notice with the colored liquid clays 
they can change the tonality of the color print. So whenever you use your color, depending upon, you know, a, a color image, it can change how it might look, especially if you use an opaque clay to back it. So that's the one thing. The second thing is each of these images, which have got the little black and white image of the hearts, I glued them down to my surface because I wanted to see what they would look like. So one, the top one was done with um, liquid super glue. The second one down at the very bottom with that milky look, that is with weld bond glue. And then the other one I glued down with E6000. So I wanted to give you guys an idea and a sense of what that looks like when you go ahead and try to use those glues on the back side of, say, one of these transfers. All right, so I had some color clay I had put down on the back of this glass piece. And I just, again, wanted to show and emphasize the difference of the tonality of say one you know like one part of a butterfly might be on the blue and then one might be on the red and it looks totally different so keep that in mind when you're going ahead and using these transfers and backing them on other clays okay so here are my results from the soft gloss laser printer paper i wanted you guys to kind of get a sense of what this would look like overall i will say that the paper matters the paper matters. So if you use regular cardstock or regular paper, you're going to probably get some up even when you try to lift up the image. If you can go with a glossy and look for one that has coating on it, a glossy coated type paper, try to do so. That's the best bet. My favorite, of course, was the freezer paper, but the thing is with freezer paper, you know, like I said, I had trouble with my machine. Now, mind you, that was after I put the wax paper through. So you might get by with it, but again, you're taking a little bit of a chance there. The other part of this is definitely the application. If you have a thin sheet of clay, make sure you build up on one side so you can get your blade underneath it to pull up that particular piece of clay. And also keep your blade handy because you might need it if it starts to catch a little bit. You don't want to rip the clay. Uh, the other part to that then is go with a little bit of a thicker, coating. You don't have to have it really thick, but just enough so you can get up that clay with really no trouble at all. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.